Hello, everyone. As a part of Fuse podcast series, the undeniable truth about six skills possessed by statistical programming heads that no one is telling you. Today, we're going to talk about drive results, described as consistently achieving results even under challenging circumstances, for which we have Dell and Mike. Mike, can you introduce yourself, please? My name is Mike Carniello. I lead the statistical programming effort at Astellas. Uh, I've been in the field for over 35 years. I uh, started out with a master's degree in statistics from Purdue University in Indiana in the U.S. And indeed, the first job was as a statistician, a statistical engineer for Pratt & Whitney, which is a jet engine company. But uh, soon after that, I moved into the pharma industry and have remained here ever since and migrated uh, to Searle in, in the Illinois area and then uh, BBN Software, Searle again, uh, becoming Pharmacia, Amgen, Takeda, and now at Astellas. I've been here since 2014, and we're a globalized operation, uh, one function, one set of processes, one compute server. And as I went through my introduction in hindsight, it seems that my previous experience has set myself up well for the work I have to do now. And Del, can you introduce yourself, please? Okay, hello everyone. I'm Del Jones and I'm the Head of Programming and Business Excellence at GSK. Um, like you, Mike, I began my career as a graduate statistician at the Wellcome Foundation in the UK. Uh, Wellcome became Glaxo, Wellcome became GlaxoSmithKline. So I've been at GSK uh, for over 25 years um, and through my career took on various statistical roles of increasing responsibility. It included a one year secondment in the US, which is great. Um, and through that time, I, I've led global stats and programming teams, um, designing reports Supporting clinical trials of all phases uh, and right the way through to submissions. Um, and then for the past three or so years now, I've headed up the Programming and Business Excellence Group. So I took that leap from statistics and now leading the organization here of around 430 people who are spread globally, um, predominantly US, Europe and India. Thank you. So could you share a few instances where you thrive hard to drive results in challenging circumstances, Mike? Yes, uh, statistical programming, I think, is really all about driving results. We're not a glamorous function, but we get the job done. And as I think about it, it's sort of like uh, the work around building a house. When you're gonna build a house, like a clinical study report, say, you start with an architect, uh, the role that has the vision that delivers the blueprints. And in our case, in our industry, it's the statistician who's de delivering a statistical analysis plan. And, and that's fine, but then you need the people that build the house. And that's where statistical programming comes in. Again, not glamorous. Uh, in our case, we serve as general contractors because we use full service providers as subcontractors, if you will, who come on site virtually uh, to, to, to do the work. They use our hammers and saws and nails Again, not really our, they use our server, our SAS macros, et cetera, but they get the work done. And uh, in terms of driving results and completing the analogy, if at the end, uh, the house looks terrific, the clinical study report looks great, uh, it might be the architect who gets all the credit. And if it doesn't look perfect in some way, of course, it's the general contractor's fault, the statistical programming fault. But uh, that's about results in, ter in terms of challenging circumstances. In, in my experience, it's typically around tight deadlines. We go in with the perspective that we can't deliver anything less than high quality results. That's a given. So it's, it's too important for all the patients that end up getting our drugs. So the challenge then is around time and around cost, how to deliver those high quality results, but somehow minimize time and somehow minimize cost. Del, you have anything to add? Yeah, so let's just uh, pick up on the, the challenges. I think we're all facing significant challenges right now. In GSK, we have, similar to you, Mike, strong pressure to accelerate in our end-to-end -end delivery of our assets all from the study level all the way through to submissions. Um, ultimately, you know, we need to get our medicines and vaccines out to the millions of people around the world who are in desperate need of them. Um, so to accelerate, but without compromise to quality. 
Uh, and on top of that, we need to deliver in a most cost efficient manner. And I think COVID has taught us all quite vividly, actually, that every one day quicker in development can result in a, a significant benefit for patients. Um, so with acceleration being one of our top priority goals this year, uh, one thing that I've realized or come to realize uh, in this role is that to drive acceleration, we need to have a good idea about our performance and our productivity levels currently. Uh, so that we can drive positive change. So we need good metrics and targets um, to help us to know where we need to improve. And when I came into this role, we didn't have that data at our fingertips. Uh, so it's been important for us to build metrics and dashboards, uh, and we're having regular conversations now uh, so that we can shape our actions and we know where we need to apply our focus to improve. Wow. So to achieve these ambitious results, I assume you need changes. So what kind of changes have you introduced and how is it being received? A change is an interesting topic for programmers. By our nature, I think we're very conservative in the, in the truest sense of the word and the work. We don't want to change. We want to stay the same. We want to do the same work as we did yesterday because it worked yesterday. Why change? And by our nature, we won't change until and unless there's evidence that a change has benefits. So I think that's important in our role here is to present evidence to programmers uh, that a change is, is good and does have benefit. And as Dell pointed out, you can do that if you have baseline metrics on certain items on, on which you can provide evidence that the change will help those metrics. And Dell, you have anything to add? So I think change can be energizing and exciting, right? But if if we manage it well and we don't try to change too much at once, because then we risk, you know, change fatigue. But we've also got to invest enough time in getting the comms, the engagement, the training and the support mechanisms right around the changes that we're trying to, to drive. And I think the secret source for a successful change is helping individuals to understand the why you know why is change needed and what's the benefit for them the carrot if you like um, so for me and gsk with our acceleration goals the why is that we need to achieve the upper quartile industry performance that's the expectation of the company but in order for us to achieve that it's not about you know making our staff work harder or longer it's about having better tools, so modern technology, simplified ways of working, and to invest more, more time and effort into capability development for a fit for the future workforce. And now, you know, we've been putting some change in place and it's actually quite exciting to see the actions that we have taken starting to come to life within the organization. That's interesting. So as a head of programming, what is it different in your role, Del? Well, I think what I've learned is that what got me here into this role is not now what I need to, to succeed in the role. Um, as a leader before, I needed to fix issues and operate downwards in, the, in order to deliver on, on performance. But now in a head of programming role, it's, it's more of an enterprise leadership role um, that I need to lead through others. So I need to spend more time looking up and working across on, in the organization. I need to set vision and direction for the group I need to be an agent of change and it's my job to create an environment in which people can be the best that they can be um, so I've learned that it's critical to surround yourself with people who are different from you uh, but also people who are better than you in multiple ways um, so it's, it's really important to have a strong leadership team around you in these positions and then one one piece of advice I give to anyone who has an aspiration to be a head of programming um, is network, network, network. Know and manage your stakeholders well and leverage them as part of your strategic network. You know, do you have a mentor? Do you have a coach? Be visible and be well connected because that's essential in these kind of leadership roles. Michael, what, what's different for you? Well, the way I think about this role is we have to provide some vision or or mission for the function in, in reflecting again on what you said in kind of two directions, I'll call it, looking outward, uh, what we're doing for the company, what we're doing for our patients, what we're doing for our colleagues outside of statistical programming. So uh, setting the tone for what we wanna uh, be perceived as from the outward uh, group, but also inward to uh, select people that are in our group that are engaged, that are technically proficient and, and that are fun to work with. So in this role, I want to describe the state we're going to be in 
for both looking outward and looking inward. And, and a big part of that is setting the culture, I think. As you said, Del, the, what got us here isn't what we're doing now. We're not programming demographic tables. We're not doing t-tests anymore. That, that's not our jobs. Our, our job is to make sure that those who do that work, they are engaged, they're happy, they're delivering uh, the right results as efficiently as they can, saving time or saving money in some way. So it's our job, again, to, to set that culture so they can succeed, they can do the work. Excellent. Great conversation, right? We hope you enjoyed today's episode and subscribe for future episodes. We would love to hear from you. And please provide your feedback and a review for others to know what to expect. Thank you for your time.